Special Counsel Jack Smith has just torched federal judge Eileen Cannon in a late night filing where Smith has called Judge Cannon out for requiring the parties to engage with unlawful scenarios to provide hypothetical jury instructions that uh, deal with the interplay between the Espionage Act and the Presidential Records Act. Special Counsel Jack Smith explains that both scenarios that Judge Cannon wants the parties to engage with are unlawful. And Jack Smith also says that if it is your intention to instruct the jury on any of these unlawful scenarios, Judge Cannon, you better let us know right this moment because we intend to seek appellate review from the 11th Circuit to have you reversed, to order you to comply with the law, and potentially even to remove you from this case. The latter part, Special Counsel Jack Smith didn't expressly state in this filing, but that was certainly implied, and I'll show you in just a moment. Now, you'll recall that a few weeks back, Judge Eileen Cannon uh, issued an order that required the parties to engage with these two scenarios. And here's what it says. It says, with respect to proposed language pertinent to the issue of unauthorized possession, specifically, the parties must engage with the following competing scenarios and offer alternative draft text that assumes each scenario to be a correct formulation of the law to be issued to the jury while reserving counter arguments. Now, you recall what I was saying here and what our other legal AF hosts were saying here. We didn't think that special counsel Jack Smith was going to, quote, engage with either of these scenarios, both of which were unlawful. We thought that special counsel Jack Smith would say both are unlawful. I'm not engaging with that, but let me provide you with the correct jury instructions, the model instructions that have been used in this district and throughout the country on charges of Espionage Act violations in all cases that have gone before the federal judiciary. This is not a new statute. It's been around for about 100 years regarding the um, willful retention of national defense information, and we know how to provide jury instructions, but this distinction that Donald Trump wants to make that the Presidential Records Act allows him to not only telepathically declassify records, but also to designate government national secrets as his own personal property, that, that simply isn't a accurate thing. That's just made up. It's false. It's fraudulent. That's not the law. It's absurd. It's asinine. And so Judge Cannon, if you're doing anything with that as a premise, you have to let us know now because we're going to go to the appellate court to get you reversed. Here are the two scenarios that you'll recall a few weeks back that Judge Cannon gave the parties um, on March 18th. She gave these uh, scenarios. A, in a prosecution of a former president for allegedly retaining documents in violation of 18 U.S.C. Section 793E, a jury is permitted to examine a record retained by a former president in his or her personal possession at the end of his or her presidency and make a factual finding as to whether the government has proven beyond a reasonable doubt that it is personal or presidential using the definition set forth in the Presidential Records Act. And B, a president has sole authority under the Presidential Records Act to categorize records as personal or presidential during his or her presidency. Neither a court nor a jury is permitted to make or review such a categorization decision. Although there is no formal means in the PRA by which a president is to make that categorization, an outgoing president's decision to exclude what he or she concludes to be personal records from presidential records transmitted to the National Archives and Records Administration constitutes constitutes a president's categorization of those records as personal under the PRA. Now, when I read both of those scenarios, I'm like, those are both just completely unlawful. You can't steal national defense information and say that because you're a former president that you're allowed to do it or that a jury or a court is not allowed to even rule on the issue. Like, what are you even talking about? And the special counsel Jack Smith says the same right here. Here's what special counsel Jack Smith said in his filing. The court has issued an order. That's why I wanted to read you the order first so you understand what Judge Kennedy is saying. 
Jack Smith goes, the court has issued an order directing the parties to file preliminary proposed jury instructions and verdict forms for counts 1 through 32 of the superseding indictment with a specific requirement that the parties, quote, engage with two competing scenarios and offer alternative draft text that assumes each scenario to be a correct formulation of the law to be issued to the jury. Both scenarios rest on an unstated and fundamentally flawed legal premise namely that the Presidential Records Act, and in particular, its distinction between personal and presidential records, determines whether a former president is authorized under the Espionage Act, 18 U.S.C. Section 793E, to possess highly classified documents and store them in an unsecure facility despite contrary rules in Executive Order 13,526, which govern the possession and storage of classified information. That legal premise, like what you are asking us to engage with, Judge Eileen Cannon, that legal premise is wrong. And a jury instruction for Section 793 that reflects that premise would distort the trial. The Presidential Records Act distinction between personal and presidential records has no bearing on whether a former president's possession of documents containing national defense information is authorized under the Espionage Act, and the PRA, the Presidential Records Act, should play no role in the jury instructions on these elements uh, for Section 793. Indeed, based on the current record, the Presidential Records Act should not play any role at trial at all. Moreover, it is vitally important that the court, that you, Judge Cannon, promptly decide whether the unstated legal premise underlying the recent order does, in the court's view, represent a correct formulation of the law. Pause there. You see what Jack Smith's saying? That even though you're not saying this in this order because you want us to engage with hypothetical scenarios, the unstated legal premise that you're saying is that Donald Trump is above the law and that he has the ability to categorize national defense information however he wants and to take it with him. And he has special privileges that are not contained within the Espionage Act and not contained anywhere in the law based on your uh, kind of unhinged legal theories that are being spread by, frankly, legal conspiracy theorists that this Presidential Records Act allows Donald Trump to steal records and classify our nuclear secrets however he wants. So let us know, Judge Cannon, if that's what you are trying to say, because, Jack Smith goes on to say, if the court wrongly concludes that it does and that it intends to include the Presidential Records Act in the jury instructions regarding what is authorized under Section 793, it must inform the parties of that decision well in advance of trial. The government must have the opportunity to consider appellate review well before jeopardy attaches. So you know how I know a lot of you were concerned. I know a lot of legal analysts on YouTube were talking about, well, if Judge Cannon doesn't make a ruling now, allows a jury to be selected, so jeopardy attaches. So then if she dismisses the case, then um, Donald Trump can't be tried again and you can't appeal it. Jack Smith's well ahead of that. That's what I've been saying before. I'm not worried about that. Jack Smith's basically saying, let us know now if this is where you're going or we're going to appeal you right now. We're not going to start trial with you not making a ruling now that you've revealed your hands that this is what you intend to do, Judge Eileen Cannon. And then they cite the case law that the adoption of clearly erroneous jury instructions that entails a high probability of failure of a prosecution, a failure the government could not then seek to remedy by appeal or otherwise, constitutes the kind of extraordinary situation in which we are empowered to issue the writ of mandamus. So Jack Smith saying, okay, let us know now if you're going to make this ruling so we can appeal you. And if you don't do that, we're going to seek a writ of mandamus. We're just going to go around your back at this point because you're so incompetent and so corrupt. We're going to file a writ of mandamus and go to the 11th Circuit. So you're now on the clock, Judge Eileen Cannon. It goes on to talk about cases that have permitted the government to obtain writs of mandamus, extraordinary writs when judges are behaving 
um, in this egregious way. It goes on to say, if, for example, the court concludes as posited in scenario A in the court's order that under the Espionage Act, a former president is authorized to possess any document that the jury determines qualifies as a personal record as defined by the PRA, that would wrongly present the jury a factual determination that should have, that shall, that should have no legal consequence under the elements of Section 793. Likewise, if the court concludes as posited in Scenario B that a president has carte blanche to remove any document from the White House at the end of his presidency, that any document so removed must be retreated as a personal record under the PRA as unreviewable as a matter of law, and that also as a matter of law, a former president is forever authorized to possess such a document regardless of how highly classified it may be and how it is stored, that would constitute a, quote, clearly erroneous jury instruction that entails a high probability of failure for prosecution. And the government must be provided with an opportunity to seek prompt appellate review. In other words, we're about to go to the 11th Circuit. You're on the clock, Judge Eileen Cannon. Be aware. And then what Special Counsel Jack Smith does is exactly what I told you he was going to do. Go back and watch my videos. Jack Smith says, look, we are not engaging with your false legal premise. We're going to appeal you. And if you don't do anything, we're going to seek a writ of mandamus. But what we are going to do, Judge Cannon, is provide you with the correct model jury instructions that have always been used in this district, in the 11th Circuit, circuits across the country, and federal courts across the country for espionage cases. We're going to provide those instructions for you so you can see what it looks like. And that's what special counsel Jack Smith does. He provides the model jury instructions. He doesn't engage with the unlawful scenarios and puts Judge Cannon on notice that she's violating the law, that he's about to go to the 11th Circuit, that her time playing these games has run out, and that her putting these two scenarios to engage with shows what a corrupt and incompetent competent judge she is. And where Jack Smith's talking about the egregiousness of her behavior, trust me, what's implied there is we're going to remove you. You're not qualified. You're not competent. See you later, Judge Cannon. This is the motion that we have been waiting for, folks. And I'm glad that Jack Smith um, uh, came out with this uh, so strongly as he did. For the reasons set forth above and in the government's opposition to Trump's motion to dismiss based upon the Presidential Records Act, the court should reject the legal premise that the Presidential Records Act distinction between personal and presidential records has any bearing on the element of unauthorized possession under Section 793E, the Espionage Act. You can't go and steal our nuclear secrets and classified information and say that they're personal. That's not the way the law works in the United States of America. As such, the court should deny Trump's pending motion to dismiss and adopt preliminary jury instructions as proposed by the government above. If, however, the court does not reject the erroneous legal premise, it should make that decision clear now, long before jeopardy attaches, to allow the government the opportunity to seek appellate review. Signed, Special Counsel Jack Smith and Jay Bratt. A beautiful legal document here, and this is what we wanted to call out Judge Cannon. We'll keep you posted with more. Hit subscribe. We're on our way to 3 million subscribers. And check out the new Midas Touch documentary. It's number one on the Apple charts. It's called Against All Enemies. Check it out. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.